Let's move on to our next category of problems, the or problems. So, so far we've been looking at and problems where two things had to happen at the same time. Now I want the probability of A or B happening. So there are two different things. And if either one or both of them happen, we're happy. So to find the probability of A or B, we're gonna take the probability of A plus the probability of B. So we wanna count all the ways A could happen and we want to add on to that all the chances of B happening, okay? But if something fell into both categories A and B, right, then they've been counted as A's and they got counted again as B's, and so they've been counted twice. And in probability, right, we want to make sure we count everything that needs to be counted once and only once. So if something did satisfy condition A and condition B, it has been counted twice, so we need to uncount those events one time. And so that's why we have the minus the probability of A and B here, right? That's the overlap. Now, I want to remind you that the probability of A and B will be zero if and only if the events are disjoint, right? Disjoint meaning that if A happens, B can't happen. And if B happens, A can't happen. That is no event can belong to both uh, event A and event B, okay? And in this case, that last term is just going to be a big minus zero, okay? So... If your events are disjoint, then the OR problems are just the sum of the probabilities. So similar to what happened with the AND problems, right? We had to do the conditional probabilities unless the events were independent, and then we could just multiply the individual probabilities. So here, ORs, we're going to add and then subtract if necessary. Now let's take a look at an OR problem in action. So we're randomly going to select one person, and I want the probability that that person either owns an iPhone or they're in the 41 to 55 age group. So we're going to apply the rule. As we saw before, the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. But we want to write it out in the context of this problem. Okay? So we're going to take the probability they own an iPhone. So we're counting everybody who owns an iPhone plus the probability that someone's in the 41 to 55 range. Okay, so we've counted all the iPhone owners, all the people in that age group. The problem is right, we have counted everybody who owns an iPhone and is in the 41 to 55 age group twice. And so we must subtract one of those counts so that everybody ends up being counted once and only once. So now we have three small probability problems. So I want the probability they own an iPhone, which would be 1764 out of 4536 plus the probability that they're 41 to 55, which would be 1386 out of 4536, okay. minus the probability that they own both an iPhone and are in the age group 41 to 55. So those 642 have been counted twice, and that's why we need to subtract them. And from there, it's just arithmetic to simplify. So... We take the probability of the first thing, A, plus the probability of the second thing, B, minus the probability of A and B, but write it out in the context. Don't use the A and the B. They're easy to get lost. So whatever it is, write out the probability of this plus the probability of that minus the probability of this and that. So let's look at example B. We want the probability they own an Android phone or are in the 26 to 40 range. Okay, so write out what the formula would be in the context of this problem. You should be writing down the probability that they own an Android plus the probability that they're in the 26 to 40 age group minus the probability that they are 26 to 40. Okay, so... Now I'm gonna pause and practice. I want you to fill in all the numbers. So go ahead and pause the video now. So here are the results you should have gotten when you practice the problem. Right, so we have everybody who owns an Android plus all those who are in the 26 to 40 age group minus those who fit into both categories and again, there's 638 people in that intersection, so they've been counted twice. We need to uncount them. 
for a grand total of either 2674 out of 4536 uh, or the decimal equivalent. Okay, so now last problem we're gonna do, we want to probably they're in the 10 to 25 age group or over 55. So I'm gonna let you pause and practice. First step, write out the formula in the context of the problem, then get your numbers. Go ahead and pause the video now. So when you got done writing, here's the formula and how it should have been written. Right. And our probabilities, okay, probability were 10 to 25 plus the probability we're over 55 minus a big fat zero because there is nobody who's 10 to 25 and over 55, right? Those two events are disjoint. Okay, so that's gonna simplify down to just 1854 out of 4536. So the probability of A or B, probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B if A and B can happen at the same time. Again, we're trying to count everything once and only once. So we're going to remind you, here's the formula. And now we're going to get into an example that is not the same as our two-way table. So this time I'm going to roll two fair six-sided dice, and I want the probability that either the first one is a six, or the second one is a six, or both. Remember, or allows for both A and B to happen. Okay, so pause and practice. I want you to write out first the formula, be specific, and then write out the probabilities and get your final answer. So go ahead and pause the video now. Let's take a look at what you got. Written out in the context of this problem, getting rid of the generic A and B and replacing them what fit with the scenario, we should have the probably the first is a six, plus the probably the second die is a six, minus the probably the first is a six, and the second one is a six. Okay, so I'm assuming these first two probabilities, the probably the first number, the first die was a six, and the probably the second die is a six. Those two didn't give you too much trouble. Those are both one sixth. Now here at the end, we need the probability that the first is a six and the second is a six. So either you have to count out all possibilities of your two dice, of which there are 36 different possible combinations of the two dice, and then count out how many of those give you what you want. Or we can use a little and rule multiplication here, keeping in mind that whether or not the first is a six and the second one is a six, those are independent events. So mathematically, the probability is simply gonna be one sixth plus one sixth minus, we're gonna multiply the probability of the first and second are sixes together. So in this last term right here, this is the probability that the first is a six and the second one is a six. Now, when I multiply that together, I get 136. So I'm gonna change those 1 6 into 6, 36, so that we can now add and subtract our fractions. Remember, if you're gonna add and subtract fractions, you must have a common denominator. And eventually, after a little bit of work, this will simplify down to 11 over 36. So again, I want you to go back to the rule. Probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B, tailored to the specific example. One more time. We're gonna draw one card from a deck of cards. And I want the probability that that result is either an ace or a spade, or both, remember. So pause and practice. Write it out in English, use your words, use your notation. After you've figured out the rule, okay, and you've written it out, then write out the probabilities and simplify. So pause the video now. So this is what it should look like once you've written out the rule. Probably the first thing plus the probably the second thing minus the probability of both things. And your probability here should be, well, there are four aces in the deck. There are 13 spades. Okay. The ace of spades is the only card that is both an ace and a spade. So it got counted first as an ace and then as a spade. 
So it's been counted twice. That's why you have to subtract one out of 52. If you have any questions about the topics covered in this video or anything else that's happening in your statistical reasoning class, talk to your instructor, go to their office hours, or take advantage of the free tutoring available in the Math Tutorial Center. Good luck and go Vols!